हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर अंकित चौहान वर्किंग एज अ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन कार्डिक एनेस्थिशिया यू एन मेहता इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कार्डियोलॉजी एंड रिसर्च सेंटर टुडे आई एम टीचिंग यू थोरेसिक एनेस्थिशिया वन लंग वेंटिलेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इंट्रोडक्शन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ वन लंग वेंटिलेशन इज वन लंग फॉर द सर्जन एंड वन लंग फॉर द एनेस्थेटिक्स द कॉलेप्स लंग give good access to surgeon and uncollapsed lung is used by the anesthetist to oxygenate originally one lung ventilation was carried out to prevent spillage of infected material mucus tumor materials from diseased lung to the normal lung during lung surgery uh, some history part kales uh, and waters first reported the use of selective lung ventilation during thoracic surgery in 1931 in uh, 1949 Carlens originated the PVC disposable DLT and Robert so introduced uh, DLT in 1962. The preoperative evaluation uh, starting from the history part we have to uh, detail uh, uh, obtain detailed medical history of any coexisting disease we have to assess functional capacity and uh, any history of smoking and symptoms suggestive of COPD should be elicited. cough uh, if any then uh, we have to uh, assess the cough by uh, productive or non productive its volume consistency color of sputum is a blunt stain or not any hemoptysis or not uh, then this patient evaluated for ischemic heart disease because they tend to be chronic smoker which predispose them to atherosclerosis patients with major factors for increased perioperative cardiovascular risk should undergo preoperative cardiology evaluation patients may receive chemotherapy preoperatively so should be elicited for chemotherapy related toxicity uh, now come to physical examination uh, we have to assess for any cyanosis or hypoxia clubbing is there or not respiratory rate and pattern uh, breath sound like asymmetric of the chest movement displacement of trachea cracks wheezing or any distant sound is present or not N- evaluation for airway is must Uh, we have to go detail uh, later on uh, discussion evaluation of cardiovascular system because this patient has increased pvr any pulmonary hypertension rvh core pulmonary and rv failure so we have to evaluate cardio- cardiovascular system also uh, now investigation we have to uh, uh, obtain complete blood count to see any uh, polycythemia due to copd or leukocytosis which may indicate active infection liver and renal function test x ray uh, which uh, should be evaluated for any tracheal deviation or obstruction which could predict difficulty in the intubation or, or ventilation any mediastinal mass which could lead to difficulty with ventilation or any superior vena cava syndrome pleural effusion or area of consolidation is present or not abg analysis is must uh, because this patient uh, has more prone for hypoxia and we have to any baseline abg parameter for comparison of post operative pulmonary function test should be carried out to diagnose obstructive or restrictive abnormality to assess responsiveness to bronchodilators and to confirm suitability for resection uh, if uh, sputum is present then sputum culture and sensitivity uh, should be used for Uh, guidance of antibiotic therapy ecg should be evaluated for signs of uh, left or right heart dysfunction and uh, transthoracic echo to rule out any pulmonary hypertension is uh, present or not it is not necessary for all the patient but for cardiac patient we have to assess uh, uh, cardiac function through transthoracic or transesophageal echo further cardiopulmonary testing may be indicated if warranted by history or above investigation now uh, we have to uh, risk stratification uh, uh, according to three lage stool of uh, pre thoracotomy respiratory assessment in which we have to assess uh, any uh, respiratory mechanics uh, lung parenchymal function cardiopulmonary reserve for respiratory mechanics we have to assess fev1 so uh, ideally uh, post operative predicted fev1 should be more than 40% we can uh, assess uh, also through mvv uh, residual volume by uh, total lung capacity fvc 
now second part we have to assess lung parenchymal function uh, D, uh, we have we, we can assess through dlco the predicted post operative value should be more than 40% or we can assess by ebg parameters like pao2 more than 60 and pso2 uh, less than 45% uh, uh, next part is cardiopulmonary reserve we have to assess vo2 max it should be ideally more than 15 ml per kg per minute and uh, we can also assess by any stair climb if it is more than two flight six minute walk test now some bad side pulmonary function test first is cough test second wheezing test uh, third is forced expiratory time we uh, instruct the patient to take the deepest breath possible and then blow it out as fast as possible if it is more than uh, six second if patient taking more than six patient uh, six seconds that indicates severe expiratory airflow obstruction with percentage fev1 less than 50 percent uh, next is sabre's breath holding time normally it is more than 40 if it is between 20 to 30 seconds it indicate compromised cardiopulmonary reserve and if it is more uh, less than 20 that indicates very poor cardiopulmonary reserve uh, next is Snyder's match test uh, in which we uh, uh, assess the ability to blow the candle off at 22 cm from mouth indicate the maximum breathing capacity more than 150 liter per minute if it is uh, at, uh, if patient is not able to blow then we have to uh, decrease the distance from 22 to 15 cm if it is uh, uh, if uh, able to blow the candle at 15 centimeter that it is uh, mbc around 100 liter per minute if it is less than 50 then patient is not able to blow the candle at 7.5 centimeter next is single breath count test uh, we have to ask the patient for counting if it is less than 15 and uh, patient interrupt the breath that indicate severe impairment of vital capacity Preoperative preparation of this patient. Uh, smoking is the most common uh, uh, predisposition of this patient. So, we uh, causation of smoking is must. If it is less than, uh, it is, if it is 24 hour uh, after causation of smoking, that carboxyhemoglobin level gradually decreases. Uh, it, uh, if it is around uh, two to three minutes of interval between uh, smoking and uh, causation of smoking, that uh, that indicate the improvement in ciliary function and sputum production also decrease and ideally four to six week interval should be there uh, that will help the uh, post uh, uh, post operative complication if patient has adequate interval of four to six week the incidence of post operative complication is very less uh, if there is infection then we have to uh, 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 start antibiotic according to sputum culture and sensitivity uh, adequate hydration and removal of the bronchial secretion through mucolytics, humidification, postural drainage, vigorous coughing, deep breathing and chest percussion. Uh, we have to add some bronchodilators also. Patient training for proper chest physiotherapy including deep breathing and coughing exercise and incentive spirometry and increase the patient participation by psychological preparation, educate and motivate for secretion removal. Adequate amount of blood should be arranged. Pain management to be discussed preoperatively with associate uh, doctors. The role of preemptive analgesia uh, that will cover in a next session. Plan for thoracic epidural, preoperative uh, pre chest X-ray and CT scan, and assess the risk for uh, hypoxia during venlan ventilation. Now pre-induction preparation. We have to insert large bore IV cannulas for rapid infusion and transfusion. Uh, standard monitoring including ECG, saturation, ETCO2, temperature. Invasive blood pressure monitoring is required for repeated ABG analysis uh, as in case of pneumonectomy. CVP and PA catheter limited use intraoperatively and transesophageal echo. Uh, some specific indication for transesophageal echo in thoracic surgery include uh, as we assume some hemodynamic instability during procedure, any pericardial effusion, cardiac involvement by the tumor, air emboli, pulmonary thromboendotectomy, thoracic trauma, RV assessment and lung transplantation. These are few indications for transesophageal echo in thoracic surgery. Uh, Pre-medication should be non-narcotic as the risk of hypoxia is high. 
uh, we can use glycopyrrolate for decreasing the secretion and short term uh, short acting benzodiazepine like midazolam in a dose of 0.05 mg per kg we can use in a uh, monitor care and uh, if patient is awake and uh, uh, awake and uh, supine that the lower lung gets at the favorable position of the ventilation pressure curve when patient is anesthetized the upper lung is at the favorable position of the ventilation pressure graph so we have to uh, manage this physiology to, during one lung ventilation uh, some predictors poor candidate for one lung ventilation that is limited exercise tolerance any cardiac pathology like moderate ms mr uh, breathlessness at rest, moderate to severe pulmonary hypertension, core pulmonary, these are the poor candidate for one lung ventilation. Uh, some predictors for hypoxia during one lung ventilation, uh, in, uh, these are the uh, some uh, predictors which help us to identify which patient are uh, more prone to hypoxia during one lung ventilation, which include uh, high percentage of ventilation or perfusion to the operative lung. Uh, on pre-operative ventilation perfusion scanning means we uh, if we planning right pneumonectomy and uh, the right lung has uh, more ventilation perfusion ratio and uh, we remove that uh, lung so this, this patient has more chances of hypoxia during one lung ventilation poor PaO2 during two lung ventilation particularly in the lateral position then a right sided thoracotomy then a supine position during one lung ventilation other causes of hypoxemia like uh, any lung disease, pre-operative medication, infection, uh, during procedure any malposition of DLT, mechanical failure of oxygen, inadequate or hypoventilation of uh, uh, double lung, intraoperative use of inhalational anesthesia and uh, factors uh, that decrease cardiac output and increase oxygen consumption. These are the factors which causes hypoxia during one lung ventilation. Now techniques of choice, generally we prefer general anesthesia with control ventilation, uh, other option like general anesthesia with thoracic epidural analgesia or intercostal block or paravertebral block. Our aim is to suppress the airway reflexes, irritability, decrease inhibition of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction and maintain the cardiovascular status. Maintain both lung ventilation as far as possible. Some property of uh, anesthetic agent used for thoracic surgery like inhalational anesthetic the desirable point is it permit high FiO2 bronchodilator property diminish the airway reflexes and rapidly eliminate it but it will inhibit the hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction as well as it, it causes myocardial depression. Opioids uh, again uh, some, uh, negative point is it may depress the ventilation. Nitrous oxide uh, the negative point is it reduces the FiO2 and may ex, uh, expand blabs or tube cuff. Ketamine has uh, uh, diminished the airway uh, irritability, does not inhibit HPV and cardiovascular stability during hypovolemia, but it will uh, cause emergence delirium. Thiopentone uh, again it causes uh, releases histamine which causes bronchospasm. Propofol has uh, uh, it does not inhibit HPV and rapid emergency there. Muscle relaxant uh, it will facilitate mechanical ventilation and improve surgical exposure and reduce the doses of anesthetic. But the negative points are uh, it potentiate post-operative weakness. It releases histamine, especially with atracurium, and it uh, requires the reversal agent. Now uh, positioning during uh, thoracic surgery the most common uh, most uh, common position is uh, lateral or uh, 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 lateral position uh, we have to uh, uh, as we show in the diagram we have to uh, proper care of the any pressure point like we uh, put a pillow below the head below the axilla then be, uh, in between the legs and fold the dependent leg uh, if uh, if any uh, of the uh, position has uh, now most common problem with this position are ischemia and uh, now damage or the compartment syndrome to the dependent arm, post-operative shoulder discomfort, lateral angulation of the neck which causes uh, jugular venous obstruction and any hyperextension of the non-dependent arm leading to traction or compression of the brachial or axillary neurovascular bundle. So our uh, 
uh, our uh, aim is to prevent this uh, pressure injuries now indications of one lung ventilation we have high priority indication and intermediate intermediate priority indication high priority uh, comprises prevention of any contamination of healthy lung uh, either with uh, infection or hemorrhage control of the disruption of ventilation like uh, in case of bronchopleural fistula unilateral bulla or airway obstruction unilateral uh, lung lavage and video assisted thoracoscopic surgery these are high priority indication in intermediate priority uh, high indication for surgical exposure like thoracic aortic aneurysm repair pneumonectomy lung volume reduction minimally invasive cardiac surgery and upper lobectomy and lower indication of uh, for surgical exposure include esophageal surgery mid and lower lobectomy mediastinal mass resection and bilateral sympathectomies these are indications for one lung ventilation now options for lung isolation we have uh, dlt uh, we have bronchial blockers univent tube endobronchial tubes and endotracheal tube which are you routinely use is advanced into the bronchus so uh, first uh, first option is dlt we can uh, insert dlt either direct laryngoscopy via tube exchanger or fiber optically the advantage of dlt is we can uh, easily uh, suction the isolated lung we can uh, add cpap to the isolated lung uh, it get alternate one lung ventilation to either lung easily and placement still possible if bronchoscopy is not available some disadvantages like uh, laryngeal or bronchial trauma and we have to change dlt at the end of operation with one uh, single lumen tube and size size selection is somewhat difficult second option is bronchial blocker we have on cohen and fuji blocker the size selection is uh, rarely an issue and we can easily add it to the regular et tube and allow ventilation during placement the uh, easier placement in patient with difficult airway and in children the post operative lung ventilation by withdrawing the blocker and uh, selection of lower lung isolation is possible and cpap to isolated lung is possible disadvantages are more time needed for positioning and we need bronchoscope for positioning and uh, bronchoscopy to the isolated lung is impossible and minimum suction to the isolated lung uh, third uh, option is univent tube it is specific uh, tube which has a external side channel for bronchial blockers the advantage is same as bronchial blocker uh, less repositioning compared to bronchial blockers some disadvantages like uh, et tube portion has higher air flow resistance than uh, the regular et tube ne uh, next is endobronchial tubes like the regular et tube easier uh, placement in patient with difficult airway longer than the regular et tube and short cuff design for lung isolation but some disadvantages like bronchoscopy necessary for placement and does not allow for bronchoscopy suctioning or cpap to the isolated lung and difficult right lung one lung ventilation uh, the last option is endotracheal tube which routinely use it is advanced into the bronchus easier placement with difficult airway but it does not allow for bronchoscope suctioning or cpap to the isolated lung cuff not designed for lung isolation and extremely difficult during right uh, one lung ventilation now techniques of one lung ventilation uh, either uh, dlt single lumen endobronchial tube or single lumen tracheal tube with bronchial blocker now first is dlt we have uh, in dlt two separate tubes bonded together one terminating into trachea and other in the main stem bronchus the size is available uh, 41 39 37 35 32 also is there uh, 28 and 26 uh, uh, different types like uh, uh, in a uh, previously uh, they use carlin tubes with carinal hook for left bronchus only white tube with carinal hook for right bronchus only then uh, robert show red rubber tubes both right and left and robert show clear plastic tube which is most commonly used now nowadays Uh, for selection of dlt based on adult patient sex and height for a female patient if it is height less than 160 cm uh, the ideal uh, uh, tube is 35 inch the if a female has more, uh, height more than 160 cm ideal tube is thir- uh, 37 inch 
for male uh, if it is less than 170 cm 39 and more than 170 cm 41 is the ideal type uh, for female patients short stature like uh, height less than 152 cm 32 tube is uh, considered and for male patients with a short stature like less than 160 cm height consider 37 it is compared to diameter of single and dlt uh, in this uh, uh, slide the fiber optic size which is used during uh, repositioning or positioning of the dlt uh, for uh, 35 37 39 and 41 which is most commonly used the fiber optic diameter is uh, more than 3.5 so we can easily use fiber optic with three uh, four size of dlt this is left sided dlt which has uh, the bronchial and tracheal lumen proximal connecting limb the proximal curvature and the distal curvature and tracheal and bronchial uh, cuff and which is the black line it is at the level of bronchus entry as we see in a small figure the black line at the level of uh, uh, at the level of carina when uh, right or left bronchus is originate L- uh, right sided dlt uh, same part but the main difference is the cuff has uh, a, a, a different shape and it is a ventilation slot for the right upper lobe uh, most commonly dlt uh, left sided dlt is preferred because the right upper lobe bronchus takes off from the right main bronchus around 0.5 to 1 cm below the carina therefore when a right dlt is placed the high chances of right upper lobe bronchus may be occluded and care has to be taken to align the slot for the right upper lobe bronchus with the opening of the bronchus and second uh, difference is left to main stem bronchus is much longer than the right one around f- uh, 50 mm as compared to 20 mm right side therefore the margin of safety is more when we uh, choose the left sided dlt uh, there are some specific indications where right sided dlt would be indicated like uh, any tumor that compresses the entrance of left main bronchus any intralumen tumor near the entrance of left bronchus left sided tracheobronchial disruption left bronchus stent descending thoracic aortic aneurysm compressing the entrance of the left bronchus and sharp angle of the entrance of the left bronchus these are few indications where right sided dlt is preferred now contraindications for dlt like uh, as we discussed before difficult airway critically sick patient full stomach and pediatric patient and any lesion in the tracheobronchial tree we uh, we have to choose other options like uh, univent tube bronchial blocker endobronchial tube likewise method for dlt insertion now uh, first is selection of proper size as we discussed before the patient height height and the size of dlt uh, now check the cuff and duplicate the tube then uh, conventional laryngoscopy after induction of anesthesia and hold the tube with distal curvature facing anteriorly after that we have to insert the uh, dlt and with distal curvature facing anteriorly as the tube passes through the vocal cord the distal uh, the uh, as the tube uh, passes the vocal cord the uh, uh, we have to uh, in, uh, turn the tube which we are using either right or left we have to turn the tube either right or left and uh, insert into the main stem bronchus now identification for proper placement of the left sided dlt uh, there are three steps first is inflate the tracheal cuff with leak disappear uh, then check for bilateral breath sound at apices if bilateral breath sound is present that that means the tracheal cuff it is in the trachea if unilateral breath sound is there that means the tube is too far down we have to uh, little bit withdraw the tube and assess the bilateral air entry now next step is clamp the tracheal lumen and inflate the bronchial cuff and ventilate the endobronchial side now check for the unilateral breath sound like uh, for left sided dlt left side and right sided dlt right side 
and persistence of breaks out on the contralateral side indicate the bronchial opening is still in the trachea. So we have to uh, insert little bit of this DLD. Now third step is clamp the bronchial lumen and unclamp the tracheal lumen and check for unilateral uh, right sided breath sound in case of left sided DLT. The absence or diminution of the breath sound indicates the tube is not far enough down and the bronchial cuff is occluding the distal trachea. So we have to in a little bit insert the DLT. Uh, next option is univent tube as we discussed uh, uh, previously the it is have it has a movable blocker shaft in the external tube of the single lumen ET tube. It is uh, advantage is easier to insert and properly position than DLT, and no need to change at the end of post operative uh, for post operative ventilation and selection blocker for some lobes of the lung is possible and suction and delivery of the CPAP to the blocked lung is possible. These are bronchial blockers Cohen, Fuji, and Ans. Cohen blocker has only one size 9 French and it has spherical balloon shape and uh, the Murphy's eye is present at the distal end and the uh, central channel has 1.6 mm internal diameter. Arn blocker has three different size 5, 7 and 9 French. It has spherical or elliptical balloon shape and uh, it is uh, Murphy eye is present only in 9 French unblocker and it has in central channel of 1.4 millimeter of internal diameter. Fuji uni, uh, uni blocker has two sides 5 and 9 French. It has spherical balloon shape and uh, it has uh, no uh, Murphy eye and 2 mm internal diameter. Out of three uh, this Fuji uh, blocker has a more uh, large internal diameter so we can easily uh, uh, suction or uh, decompress the lung. Now insertion technique, it is uh, useful when it is not possible to place a DLT or in situation where the patient has already been intubated with a single lumen tube. The blocker has a, uh, it is specifically for uh, this ANS. The blocker has a guide wire in its lumen at the end uh, which can be hooked over the bronchoscope so the blocker can be inserted under direct vision into the lung that to be collapsed. Uh, this guide wire need to be removed before air can be withdrawn from the blocker and hence the collapse of the lung. But disadvantage is that once the guide wire of the device has been withdrawn, it cannot be reinserted. So the blocker cannot be, uh, not, cannot be reused or repositioned in the patient. Uh, there is fiber optic anatomy. Uh, as we see the first at the tracheal carina, we can easily appreciate the carina and uh, opening of the right and left main stem bronchus. As we go in the right side, there is B part, there is bronchial carina. Uh, there is right upper lobe uh, bronchus opening is there. As we again go into the right upper lobe bronchus, there is three opening. The uh, uh, apical anterior and posterior segment of the right upper lobe bronchus. As we uh, go uh, uh, down in the right main, main stem bronchus, we, have two, uh, we, we can appreciate the right middle lobe and lower lobe entry. Uh, we, uh, as we go in the left side, there is two opening for left upper and lower lobe. And uh, uh, this is fib fiber optic anatomy is useful for uh, adequate position of the DLT or bronchial blocker. Now management of one lung ventilation. We have to plan before instituting one lung ventilation and after uh, during the one lung ventilation. Before starting one lung ventilation. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have no, uh, two type uh, two lungs non dependent lung and dependent lung for non dependent lung the composition of the gas mixture in the non dependent lung will affect the rate at which the lung collapses so we have to oxygenate with 100% oxygen so that it can be easily collapse and we, uh, it will help the surgeon for uh, operating the uh, on that side and the dependent lung to prevent the atrial excesses uh, we have to apply a recruitment maneuver before uh, applying the one lung ventilation. Now during the one lung ventilation our uh, aim of uh, ventilation, our target of ventilation is maintain the volume of 5 to 6 ml per kg, maintain peak pressure less than 35 cm of water, maintain plateau pressure less than 25 cm of water, uh, peep of 5 
to ventilate lung avoid the patient with copd and respiratory rate to maintain normal pseo to around 35 to 45 and we can use either volume or pressure control mode same thing uh, now what happen during hypoxemia management of hypoxemia during one lung ventilation if hypoxemia is severe and precipitous desaturation we can resume two lung ventilation after discussing with surgeon uh, if there is gradual desaturation the no, uh, number of steps we can follow uh, first is we ensure that the fir2 should be increased to 1 100% fir2 should be there check the position of dlt or blocker with fiber optic bronchoscopy ensure that is cardiac output is optimum and decrease the volatile anesthetic to less than 1 mac uh, we can apply recruitment maneuver to the ventilated lung we can apply peep of 5 to ventilated lung now uh, we can apply cpap of 1 to 2 cm of water to the non ventilated lung uh, we can apply cpap after recruitment maneuver and uh, either uh, we can apply intermittent reinflation of the non ventilated lung and partial ventilation technique for non ventilated lung include the lung oxygen insufflation lobar insufflation and lobar collapse yeah uh, using the bronchial blocker and after all these maneuver it is not possible to compensate hypoxemia so we can apply mechanical restriction of the blood flow to the non ventilated lung if hypoxemia still occur so we have to consider pneumothorax of the dependent lung uh, rupture of the tracheobronchial tree or inadvertent suturing of the tube to the bronchus during the surgery now some common problems and pitfalls during one lung ventilation like hypoxemia it may be due to intrapulmonary shunt during one lung ventilation sudden severe hypotension because of surgical compression of the heart and great vessels sudden change in ventilating pressure or volume it may be because of movement of endobronchial tube blocker or may be due to air leak some arrhythmias due to direct mechanical irritation of the heart bronchospasm due to direct airway stimulation or any uh, reactive airway is there already massive hemorrhage surgical blood loss from great vessels or inflamed pura and hypothermia because of heat loss from the open hemithorax these are common problem uh, during one lung ventilation fluid management fluid restriction is generally advocated in lung resection the maintenance fluid should be given at a rate of 2 ml per kg per hour uh, it may be due to there is uh, third spacing is not excessive in lung surgeries the dependent lung has a tendency for high capillary hydrostatic pressure so post operative pulmonary edema may be there if we are adequately giving fluid to this patient post operative pulmonary edema may occur if remaining pulmonary vasculation cannot tolerate the entire cardiac output and intraoperative lung manipulation and collapse may impair the lymphatic drainage for all these reason we have to restrict the fluid for thoracic cases it is recommended that the total positive fluid balance in first 24 hours should not exceed 20 ml per kg the post operative pain management comprises thoracic epidural analgesia intrathecal opioid uh, paravertebral block intercostal nerve block and parenteral opioid which will discuss in the second part thank you